Hey there, Editor Dylan here, back once again with What If, where, much like the big-headed Uatu, we take a look at alternate universe What If and Elseworlds stories from the multiverse of comics. Today we're going to be looking at What If the Avengers Had Never Been, from the ancient days of 1977, with What If number 3. Let's get started. Uatu once again peers into the myriad of alternate realities that spin through the cosmos. One day in our world, Hulk ran from the team that would become the Avengers. Working together, however, Iron Man, Thor, Wasp, and Giant Man hunted down the Emerald Monster, fighting against him when he teamed up with the anti-hero known as Namor. After driving both Namor and Hulk away, the heroes decided to form the team known as the Avengers. However, in this alternate reality, things play out with one slight difference. When Hulk leaps away, the Avengers don't hesitate, but Giant Man steps in, pointing out that the group is strictly volunteer, and that the Hulk doesn't have to stay if he doesn't want to. Thor nods, agreeing with the man, realizing that he has duties beyond the realm of Midgard. And so, the god takes his leave as well. With their heaviest hitters gone, both Giant Man and Wasp realize that this initiative may be fruitless, and that their powers aren't enough to make them superheroes. They both leave, stranding only Iron Man to worry about what trouble the Hulk might get into. Left alone inside the townhouse that would become known as Avengers Mansion on our world, Iron Man decides to use his shortwave radio to reach out to Rick Jones, friend to the Incredible Hulk. The teenager answers, agreeing to begin searching for the Hulk, but much like our world, when he does confront the behemoth, he is nearly killed. Finally, Rick calls Iron Man, informing the hero that the Hulk is on a rampage. Iron Man leaps into action, quickly flying to where the Hulk is causing destruction. On arrival, the two heroes trade blows, yet, even though he wears the world's most advanced weapon system as his armor, Iron Man is no match for the Hulk, and is swiftly defeated. With his victory, the Hulk once again leaps away. Iron Man returns to his mansion, bringing Rick Jones along with him. Rick congratulates the hero, believing that he almost beat the Hulk. He's a tough customer, lad. I did my best. If only the Avengers had stayed together. I know we could have captured him as a team, Iron Man tells him. Elsewhere in the world, the Hulk and Namor fight, much like they did on our world, until finally agreeing to an alliance. They sent out a challenge to the Avengers, not knowing that the team had disbanded. Upon hearing the message, Iron Man agrees to meet them in 48 hours at Gibraltar, not wanting to seem weak by letting them know that the Avengers are no more. Standing in his workshop, Tony is unsure of what to do. Finally, it dawns on him. Of course, if I can't call on the old Avengers, Maybe I can create new Avengers, he exclaims. The next 40 hours pass in a rush. Eventually, Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne, and Rick Jones arrive at Iron Man's workshop, having been called there. The others have given up their superheroics, but Iron Man convinces them that Hulk and Namor have to be stopped. Agreed, but how? Pym questions. Iron Man then shows them the armor that he and his boss, Tony Stark, spent the better half of the past two days creating. The three try the custom armor on, testing out their compatibility, but they struggle to get the hang of things. The three fumble, overthinking their new armors. Iron Man snaps and starts yelling at them all. Not wishing to rush into battle with weapons they don't understand, the group decides to once again leave the shell head on his own. Dismissing the fleeting ideas of calling on the Fantastic Four for help or just plain turning coward, Iron Man does the only thing he can think of. Knowing that he doesn't have the power to stop Namor and the Hulk on his own, he bypasses his armor's safety protocols, pumping it full of power that could be fatally dangerous on his heart. I'm ready, he exclaims as he flies toward the battle with Namor and the Hulk. And today is the day the world finds out whether the invincible Iron Man is truly invincible. Meanwhile, in the city streets below, Rick Jones finally catches up with Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, and explains that he's afraid that Iron Man will do something rash without their help. At Gibraltar, Iron Man quickly enters into battle with the two superpowered beings, but he's moving faster now, firing his repulsor rays at Hulk and knocking him back. Namor moves in for the kill, but is shocked to find Iron Man dodging him, moving faster than ever before. Iron Man dodges again, allowing Namor to smash into the rocks and bury himself. With one foe down, Iron Man knows that he needs to defeat the Hulk. The Emerald Monster gets the drop on him, though, almost knocking him out of the sky, but Iron Man leads the Hulk into a pond of stagnant water. With the slime on the pond floor, Hulk can't find footing to leap away. Iron Man uses this moment to shock the water, hoping to drop the Hulk. He pours on more and more electricity, draining his own power reserves, and finally, the Hulk goes down, stunned. But now, he is weakened, and Namor once again leaps into the fight. The Submariner lands blow after blow, knocking Iron Man into the water. Another blow knocks the Armored Warrior from the water, leaving him broken on the stony ground. 
Hulk comes back to consciousness, and the two loom over the fallen hero. But suddenly, they turn, shocked by the sound of approaching repulsor jets. Hank, Janet, and Rick arrive on the scene, clad in their new armors. Janet moves in fast, knocking Namor aside and pelting his face with her poisoned stingers. Staggered, he tries to attack Rick, but the teenager becomes intangible, allowing Namor to pass right through him. While they continue to fight, Janet tries to sting the Hulk, but the giant's skin is too tough. Hank moves in, using the armor to grow larger. The two trade blows, knocking one another around, but the Hulk only grows stronger and finally knocks Hank down. It doesn't matter how big you are or how powerful. Sooner or later, I'll wear you down and then I'll smash you, he snarls. Hank is down and Janet screams, letting them know that he isn't breathing. Wounded, with his armor nearly destroyed, Iron Man pulls himself along the ground, trying to aid the fallen Hank. Janet cries for Iron Man to do something, and the armored warrior places his hands on Hank's chest, using the last of his power reserves to shock the fallen hero back to life. Come on, Hank! It's all on the line now! All up to you! He exclaims. Hank snaps back to life, questioning Iron Man. Forget about me! Get the Hulk before he hurts Wasp or Rick! He tells him before collapsing. Hank moves in fast, landing blow after blow against the Hulk, knocking him into the rocks. Elsewhere, Namor has regained his strength, finally getting a hold of Rick in his armor. He lands a mighty blow against the teenager, knocking him to the earth. But Hulk sees his friend plummeting to the ground and leaps to save him. He catches the boy, and anger fills him as he realizes that Namor almost killed his friend. The two trade blows, falling into the ocean. The sea boils with the strength of their battle, but eventually, the two part. Namor realizing his efforts are fruitless, and the Hulk needing to surface for air. Back on land, the three armored fighters remove their helmets. On this day, the Avengers were assembled. But who is it they are avenging? Hank, Janet, and Rick decide to dedicate themselves to being heroes to preserve the memory of the fallen Iron Man, revealed to them for the first time as Tony Stark, who gave his life in service of the world. And that's how What If the Avengers Had Never Been ends. This one was requested by you guys, so keep those requests for what-if stories coming if you got them. I'll be sure to add them to the list. I think this issue is fun. There's not a whole lot of substance here. It's basically just one big fight, but it's cool to see some early Iron Man stuff and just really see these characters from their 70s incarnations interact. A big thing that stood out to me, which we kind of cut out in our retelling, is how the Wasp was written. She, unsurprisingly for the time, has an incredibly one-dimensional and sexist portrayal. Product of her time and all, but it still was a little shocking to see considering how strong and fleshed out of a character Janet Van Dyne is nowadays. Anyway, thanks so much for watching What If. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have any suggestions for future episodes of the show, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash comicstorian if you want to see shows like this one keep going. You'll get early access to all these videos along with unedited versions of the podcast and a bunch of other extras like that. Thanks for watching!